Okay, so now we're going to take a look at online reading comprehension. This is the second cornerstone or one of the cornerstones of the online research and media skills model. Initially, when we take a look at this, we want to focus on the essential elements of this or back when I was teaching the essential question. So this is an initial tweetable summary. So we're going to look at having students search and sift through relevant information and assessing credibility in print and digital texts as they read online. We need to keep in mind back when we focused originally on the framing elements of this ORMS curriculum that the changing nature of literacy is one of the things that motivates much of this. Uh, a literature review on new literacies research basically stated a number of things, most notably that the internet is the dominant text of our generation. Uh, we also use these new literacies and these digital texts and tools and, and the internet as a text as a way to socialize and communicate. Um, but all this is constantly changing. And so the, the, truth of the, the truth of all this is that we need to change as well. And it's not one of these things that we change and then we basically say that we are ready and we are prepared. This is a constant reevaluation and assessment. And, and a reflective element of the way that we interact with literacy. We make this statement that in my group, in my work, we say that the internet is the dominant text in our classroom for students. I totally believe that. I think that the students that I have, you know, you could count in that. Uh, graduate students that I have in the pre-service program, we could talk about current teachers that I work with. Uh, we could talk about K-12 students that I uh, work with and have worked with. Uh, and also anecdotally, friends and family members that are around my age and some older than me. For the most part, we use the internet as a text now. We use it uh, to read and learn and we communicate with others and we socialize on it. If we use the internet in our schools, we have the opportunity to extend the boundaries of teaching, learning, and literacy. Um, I think that, you know, when I think about my son or students I work with, I have no idea what the future is going to look like and what they'll be able to use when they grow up, but I do know that they need to be prepared for that and they have to be prepared to use a, a wide array of internet technologies and digital text and tools. And if used correctly, the internet has the ability to, if we use it thoughtfully, transform instructional practice. So what we're looking at in this video is online reading comprehension. Online reading comprehension we frame as questioning, locating, evaluating, synthesizing, and communi communicating informational texts. Each one of these is a challenge of, in and of itself. We, you know, we try to figure out different ways to have students, for example, in questioning, understand the question that the teacher is asking, be able to restate it in their own words. Uh, develop keywords or themes associated with this question. Um, locating is locating within a search uh, within a search engine or locate information within a web page. Evaluation is how do we critically evaluate uh, how do we think about the credibility and relevance of information that we're reading. Uh, synthesis is when we have students summarize or look across different texts and then communicating is responding this out to others. So we'll take a little bit more of a look at it. Successful students, if a student is successful at reading online, we say that they know how to restate a question in their own words. They know how to formulate keywords from a question. Uh, and, and probably most importantly, one of the challenges is this metacognitive piece where students know when they have all the information needed to answer that question. When we think about locating, there are different things that students that are successful at locating know how to do. Uh, for instance, students know how to use different search engines. Uh, I know that I have everything under the sun in Google's hands, uh, but they really should have, and some search engines are better for different things. Uh, students should be able to use internal search engines on a website. They should be able to go to a site and, you know, if the site has this ability, search within the site and know that the information is not just going to slap them in the face. Students need to be able to look across a web page and figure out whether or not the information is there that they're looking for. Uh, and if not, then they back out and go to a different search uh, task to find more information. 
And one of the most challenging things that is also a part of locating is that students need to know how to ignore specific parts of information. We don't often talk about that in our classrooms with our students, but there's a lot of distractor information that our students don't need to consider or don't need to worry about as they're reading online. And that's one of the pieces that we need to keep and keep track of as our students read online. Evaluation is uh, a challenging concept. Uh, we talk about critical evaluation of online information. This was the basis of my dissertation. We want to take a look at the way that individuals think about the credibility and relevance of information as they read online. So a student that's successful in terms of, evalu of evaluation knows when the information they're reading meets her needs. Students also know where to look for, how to identify, and how to use information about an author or a publisher to help them think about what they're reading. Students also, when they read online, people when they read online, not only do they need to know who the author is and think about the author, but you have to make some, you have to gain some understanding about the level of authority on a subject by the author. So you need to think about that author, you need to think about who they are and what their job is, how much do they really know about what they're writing about. Um, and many times, all of, all of that information is not there. Uh, in face-to-face in -face conversations and traditional you know, relationships, we look at cognitive authority. We look at figuring out a person and do they really know what they're talking about and do I believe them, do I trust them? A lot of that is wiped out when we look at online information and we need to provide opportunities for students to think about that. Um, but then also our le just basic argumentation skills um, how does that author, how does that expert support his or her argument in the text? And, and we can make decisions about whether or not we believe or about the credibility or relevancy of that site based upon those aspects. We also, in online reading comprehension, want to have students synthesize across multiple information sources. This is hugely complicated. Uh, I think we don't spend enough time taking a look at this. But it's interesting to see how students synthesize, how students synthesize and work uh, individually and collaboratively with others. That adds another layer of complexity to this. But basically, we say that uh, a student that is successful in synthesis as they read online, uh, first of all, they know how to select and construct the information that she needs uh, as they work online, so they know what parts of it to, le to put in and leave out. Uh, students also know which information to ignore, and we stated this earlier. Students also know uh, the way that uh, numeracy is hugely important online. They know how images and visual literacy and numbers and charts and graphs help construct meaning, and they can look at these charts and graphs and pull information out of those sources and add them into their synthesis. And then finally, students know when they have an answer, when they have learned all that they need to know, they have all the parts of the puzzle, and they have their answer, and they're ready to communicate that out. The last part of online reading comprehension we look at is communication. In communication, we say that students that are successful at communicating, they know how to select the most appropriate communication tool for their purpose. So this is partly to do with differentiation of instruction but and differentiation of assessment. But when students are finished their inquiry-based task, do we, provide them for, do we provide them with opportunities to select different communication tools? And if so, do they know why they're selecting it, why it's best for the purpose, why it's best for the audience, why it's best for the task? So for example, if they research uh, you know, personal media players that the school might buy for students, is this something that they should write a blog post about and publish it online? Is this something that they should write an email to and an attachment and send it to the school board? Is this something that they go into a discussion thread and they basically post to their classmates and the teacher will read it there? So how do the different communication tools affect the task and whether or not it'll be successful for the purpose? When they communicate, 
this was always a challenge for students that I had in my classes when they would write. You know, it basically you get the question, I still get the question, well, how long does this paper have to be? The truth of the matter is, if we talk about what information to submit and what to leave out, students need to know, did they answer all parts of the task? Did they provide you with all the information you need to understand their answer? Uh, and then also, last that we have on here, students that, that are successful at communicating, share all the information needed to completely answer the question. They don't leave anything out. There are multiple tools that we can use to scaffold uh, this process. One thing to keep in mind is that we're looking at the student learning objectives. We're not really focused on the tool. We want to know what tools are there to support the learning objective. So if we take a look at this, Google Forms is an opportunity for us to create formative and summative assessments. Uh, we can have students blog about the process. We can use Digo to have them highlight and annotate text. Uh, and then also Google Custom Search is a great tool to scaffold uh, an internet search or sc scaffold a piece of information for students. So why is this important? One of the basic elements is that online reading comprehension is a social imperative. Use of the internet is a social imperative. We need to provide opportunities for kids to use this later on. And the truth of the matter is, as evidenced by research that was recently conducted at UConn, students that need it the most might be receiving it the least. This is something our students need when they grow up. This is a, an integral part of their future, and a lot of times we're not using it in the schools with the students that need it the most. Also, the truth of the matter is right now, uh, we know very little about differences between online and offline reading, online and offline reading comprehension, about the skills that students use or need to use, uh, and that also extends to the writing part that we'll talk about in one of the other cornerstones but the more that we use it, the better we can understand it. Also, this sort of informational text use is exactly what the PARC and the Smarter Balanced and some of the Common Core assessments are gonna be using, and we need to integrate these into our classes now to better prepare them. There are opportunities for us to go online and figure out how to use online reading comprehension to help students collaborate and connect with others uh, the Digiteen Flat Classroom Project is a way to connect, ePals, we can get students online and classrooms online and they can communicate with other cultures um, and use that as the inquiry-based tool or as the vehicle for the tool. iEARN is a great product that's a great environment that students can go in and collaborate and work with others. And last but not least, globalsearch.net is a way to interact and see what other communities are out there and how to connect. So once again, this is online reading comprehension. The focus is on, this, on the student learning objectives and on use of the internet as the dominant text in the classroom and as a way for students to collaborate and think and work with others. And this is one of the cornerstones of the online research and media skills model.